Hello, my name is Jenny Wilder and I'm the rector of St. Anne's Episcopal Church here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And it is my joy to welcome you to Sunday morning worship. Everything that you need is in the bulletin in front of you and the link is in the chat box if you haven't had a chance to find it yet. Please stay afterwards for our virtual coffee hour for a chance to check in with one another and catch up. Let us just take a few moments now as we listen to the prelude and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Again, good morning and welcome.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Lamb the King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you promise us peace that passes all understanding. Give us the courage and the creativity to see your peace as an attainable reality for all the world. As we pause, help us to visualize your peace. An end to violence of thought, word, and action, in religion, in government, in business, in our streets, our schools, our churches, our homes, and ourselves. Let us pray. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Jacob, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report to them, to their father, of them to their father. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than any others of his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem, and Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Sechem? Come, I will send you to them. He said, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where are they pasturing the flock? The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Duthan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. And they saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we will see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him in this pit in the wilderness, but lay no hand 
on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to their father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites so, and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some midnight traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and they sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We will read in unison Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6, 16 through 22, and 45b. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds to the people. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done. He wonders and he judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters. His neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom. Alleluia. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you and your lips and in your heart, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Oh, mm -hmm. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, it has been a strange year. A year filled with racial tensions, injustice, courage, sickness, mystery, uncertainty, and death. Our country is at war with one another, Lord, and the dividing lines are falling into the places where you have made us beautiful and unique. In all the many ways you have created us in your image. Help us, Lord. Save us. Help us to see the other as beloved. Help us to see the other through your eyes. I miss my friends, God. I miss holding them. But I have faith, Lord, that one day, one day, we will all arrive on the other side, united, united in love and in bonds of what this year has caused us all to face. We are going where you sent us out. We know the journey won't be easy. It really hasn't been an easy year this year. But you have called each of us to follow you. And even through all this chaos, discomfort, mystery, you are with us still. So we follow where you send us knowing that there may be storms and danger, wind, and we may get lost along the way. You have put us in the boat and you have said that you will be with us on the other side, that you will love us to the very end. We know that the world around us offers many distractions, causing us to take our eyes off of you and to give our hearts to so many other things, which leads us to take our focus off of you. Give us the strength and the courage to redirect our energy, our time, our gifts, our love to you, and help us to remember who we are and whose we are, and that when we do love the world around us the way you have taught us, 
that the storms around us and within us are quieted down. It is only in you that we live in safety. It is only you that gives us the peace that we are longing for. We may be frightened by what it is that you ask us to do. We may be frightened sometimes by the place you send us to. And sometimes we may be frightened by you because you see our brokenness. We cannot hide anything from you because we know to accept your love for us, we must in turn love ourselves and our neighbors. And that is harder to do than it is to say. We must continuously look to you as our example. We must abide in you for the peace that we long for, the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that this world so desperately needs. In a world and in a time when we don't know peace, that very peace, the peace of Christ, can be frightening. So call us to come to you. So call us, Lord. Continue to call us. Continue to call us to leave behind the safety and comfort of what we know and give us the courage to step out, to keep stepping out and to keep our focus on the doing of your will. As we step out into the unknown, celebrate with us when we move in that direction. Even though we may get distracted even when we may take our focus off of you, help us to remain faithful, Lord. Help us put away all of our doubt and keep our hearts moving towards you. Because right now, right now, Lord, nothing feels peaceful right now does not feel comfortable, but you, Lord, are the source of that comfort and that peace. You, Lord, are the source of love. Keep our feet moving towards you, following you no matter how uncomfortable this journey may be. And when we fall, and when we slip, when the world around us does everything within its power to distract us, to turn us around, to frustrate us so much that we quit, that we want to quit. Lord, keep us faithful. Keep us moving in your direction. And when we slip and when we fall and when we sin, give us the courage to, to cry out for you, Lord, save us. Lord, save me. I cannot do this on my own. Help us to remember that the other is beloved and that no one is beyond the reach of your redeeming grace. That grace is extended to each of us and what grace it is to be met by you in our struggle. And how neat and right it is for us to praise you and give you thanks. For you are the one who puts us on solid ground, even when the world feels like it is falling away beneath us turning and turning and turning again, Lord. Help us direct our hearts towards you because with you, nothing is impossible.
and with you, we are offered a peace like no other. We are tired, Lord. We have been battered by this world and especially this year. And we have faith that we are walking with you, following you, and the call you have given each of us. Come. Amen. Rising as you are able, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshiped and glorified. She is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, Sam and Ann, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church, especially the churches in the diocesan cycle of prayer, for St. Luke's, St. Matthew's, San Mateo, and St. Paul's of Salisbury. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. At this time, if you have any prayer requests, thanksgivings, intercessions, petitions, uh, to offer them up aloud, uh, please conclude um, your prayer request by saying, this is my prayer and we will respond, this is our prayer. We're on mute. <clears throat> I have some prayers of healing for Robert. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. This is our prayer. I ask your prayers for Robin's mom, who is recovering in ICU in Mississippi. This is my prayer. It's our, it's our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> I, I pray for the repose of the soul of Ronnie Banks, a friend of ours. This is my prayer. This is, this is our, our prayer. prayer. Our prayer. Yeah. I ask your prayers for Fabian, who moved on Friday to Miami to live with his brother. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. I ask your prayers for those in Beirut, uh, the countless homeless now at this time, and also the, the families of, of the victims. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. 
I ask your prayers for my friend Larry, who apparently cannot move his right side, healing for him. This is my prayer. This is our, this is our, this is our prayer. prayer. I ask Thank your prayers you. for the family of Irene Burton and all as she has transitioned to the larger life. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. <clears throat> I ask your prayers for continued healing for John Lockwood. This is my prayer. This, this is, is our, our prayer. prayer. Are there any other prayers from the community? Lift up the bishops of our diocese as they are working with um, continue to discern uh, our next steps as a diocese and as a church. I to pray for all of those who are suffering from all those who are waiting testing. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my own truth I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of the church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city. And with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. 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 Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. We give thanksgiving for the birthdays this week, including John Miracle. Pray that we, we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, servants suffering from COVID-19 and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We give thanks for the bounty of prayer shawls offered and made by Sandy and Carol. May God's blessing be upon this shawl and these shawls warming, comforting, and folding, and embracing. May this mantle be a haven, a sacred place of security and well-being, sustaining and supporting in good times as well as difficult ones. May those who receive these shawls be cradled in hope, kept in joy, kept in grace, and wrapped in peace. And may the blessing of God's love be upon them. I ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. 
Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also so with you. Let us greet one another with a word of peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, John Myrick. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, John. Peace, William. Peace, Nancy. Peace, Laura. Peace, Catherine. Peace, everybody. Peace, Peace, Robin Kelly. Peace, David. What's up, Becky and Ron? Peace, Sandy. Peace, Barbara. Peace, Robin. Peace, Carol. Peace, Tom. Rachel. Peace, Rachel. Peace, Mary. Peace, Kirk. Peace, Jack. We're always with you. Peace, Laura. Peace to all. Peace, Chris. Everybody. Peace, Ray. Peace, 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 David. Peace, 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 <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, Peace, Julie and Sam. We can continue this uh, when we have our coffee hour at the end of the service. Um, but let us uh, turn to the front of our bulletin and read together our mission statement. <clears throat> Knowing that all things come from God, we seek to manifest the love of Christ, the love of worship, 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 Ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. We offer up this memorial service, the celebration of Holy Eucharist in the honor and memory of Irene Burton. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, join in our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Anne and Irene and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from king. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. 
Let us pray together the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. On behalf of the St. Anne's Parish, communion will be received by Mary and Julie and Debbie. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Having been fed at this table to go out and feed others, a few announcements. Details about Irene's memorial service will be finalized this week and sent out to the parish via our email chain, so um, keep your eyes open for that. I, I can tell you that it will be done like our Sunday morning services are done through Zoom so that um, we can all participate in a safe way. On Sunday, August the 23rd, um, following the 10, 10 o'clock service, there'll be an all parish meeting to talk about um, the next step in um, our reopening, as well as get a, um, an update on our current budget. And um, also hear some news about um, uh, diocesan guidelines around annual parish meetings. So please make time in your calendar on August the 23rd to please uh, join us for that meeting. Faith on Film, uh, Racism in America will continue tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. on Zoom. If you'd like to join us, please make sure to watch Selma uh, before tomorrow morning at 7 p no, tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Happy Holy Hour will happen this week at 7.30 on Zoom, where we'll look at this coming Sunday's gospel passage and have conversation about where it intersects with our life today. A big thank you to Julie and to Lauren and David and Debbie and Mary and Peyton for uh, helping our service be all it is th today for their gifts of reading and music. Please stay for our coffee hour and to the vestry, there is no check-in today. I'm gonna bless us. We're gonna sing our concluding hymn and then Mary will dismiss us. So my friends, life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those that we travel with. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind and rest assured that God is infinitely more concerned with the hope of our future than the sins of our past. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.